Welcome back to Mandate 2012. Before we went into break, a very provocative remark made by Yogendra Yadav, who said to Smriti Irani, she said, I'll respond to him after the break, that Narendra, Sanjay Nirupam also with us, that Narendra Modi's victory represents the dark side of democracy and presents a challenge to democratic functioning. I'd like to get Smriti Irani's response to that. Then we'll get Sanjay Nirupam back into the debate. Smriti Irani, Yogendra Yadav and the There's panel are all ears. Your response. To what the question I want to ask Mr. Yadav is that all those Muslims who voted for Narendra Modi and BJP, is Yogendra Yadav suggesting that those Muslims of Gujarat are communists? All those in the tribal wealth of Gujarat who voted for Narendra Modi, are they communal Mr. Yadav? All those Parsis which are considered to be the micro minorities in the country who voted for Modi, are they communal, Mr. Yadav? Is a question I want to pose to him, but I know that Mr. Yadav will retain the belief that he has against the BJP, irrespective of what I say. So I would like to remind Mr. Yadav that your party, sir, that you support in Delhi, is busy cutting electricity wires. I want to say very clearly that the people who are cutting the electricity wires are not going to be able to cut the हर घर तक बिजली पहुंचाने से लोकतंत्र मजबूत होता है जो हमने गुजरात में किया है कैन आई आंसर या या प्लीज डू प्लीज डू शी इज वेटिंग फॉर योर रिप्लाई स्मृति जी आई वुड क्लेरिफाई एंड आई हैव सेड दैट राइट फ्रॉम द मॉर्निंग इन फैक्ट आई हैव बीन सेइंग दैट फॉर लास्ट सम टाइम दैट दिस इलेक्शन वाज नॉट फॉट ऑन कम्युनल क्वेश्चन Unlike 2002, this election had many questions. Communalism was not the dominant question. Certainly the intent, not only of those 20% Muslims who voted for BJP, but those overwhelming number of non-Muslims who voted for BJP, their intent was not communal. I think one should not confuse that. I have always maintained a distinction, probably it's a hard distinction to maintain in television studios, between intentions and consequences. I can see Uncle Shavar here on my left and that emboldens me to state this distinction between intentions and consequences. I'm speaking only about consequences. I'm not saying this is the intention of BJP voters. No, these so are why is, the, why is this victory a dark chapter, dark side of democracy? Explain that. The consequence of this victory is affirmation of something which was truly a dark chapter of Indian democracy, oh. 2002. About this, about uh, which object. Mr. Modi, Mr. Uh, if I can oh. simply say, I heard Mr. Modi very carefully and no, I was sir. honestly hoping that I in this moment of glory reject. and magnanimity, he would be it able to say, like the Congress was forced to say a few years Gujarat. later, he was able to, he would be able to say, sorry, I feel sorry about what happened in 2002. Oh. Now I'm a national leader, I want to move on. Oh, okay. I didn't hear anything You wanted an sort. apology from him this, after, uh, this, this evening. You would have expected him to come and say, I'm sorry for 2002. But that's why up, I expected similar apology from Congress in 1985. It didn't come. And okay. It, it came. It came and much later. About it. I would have expected. I'll, I'll open this and up. I would expect such apology from anyone who is involved Rani, in something like before, this before, and before, wants be, to be I the understand. national understand. leader understand. of before this country. Before Smriti Irani takes you on, Swami Nathan Iyer, do you feel Yogendra Yadav has been fair in describing the Narendra Modi's victory in the manner that he has, the consequences of the victory? Not the intentions, as he has himself clarified. No, no, first, Swami. if you want to talk about a dark side, there was a dark side of Indira Gandhi who sure. declared an emergency. Yes. A dark Absolutely. side of Rajiv Gandhi in 1984. Communist parties, I mean, they've killed democracy in a large number of countries. They were so upset when democracy returned to Eastern Europe. They were dying for the dictatorship. I mean, so if you're talking yes. about a dark side, there are a very large number of dark <coughs> sides. And the idea that, you know, therefore India is in desperate danger because we have the BJP, the Communist Party and the Congress Party is a way, I think, of shying away from yes, the reality. Yes, let me come across to this side of the pile. Aarti Jairat, do you agree with Yogendra Yadav or do you disagree with him on that? You know, I actually um, am not so much on the communal question. I have issues with Narendra Modi's development plank. This plank that no. developed him, that... Uh, That's another question. No, the question no, it's is not. It's an, not. Because, an interpretation... Narendra Modi's model of development is survival of the fittest. Anybody who's weak, dispossessed, marginalized, has no place in Narendra Modi. Is that true? Is it's that true? only those who are aspirational, strong, healthy... But then, why has, well, then why has Narendra Modi's they vote... Get ahead. Then why has Narendra Modi's vote increased in rural parts? Uh, why has it increased in the tribal belt? Why has it increased among but Muslims? But overall, his vote share has fallen, as we saw. The Despite an increase okay. in the vote, in, in the voting sure, percentage, but his vote share has fallen by 2%. But it's a broader question. So I think that that's, a, that's an important It's an important... Artosh, do you agree with this assessment? Do you feel that there is a strong constituency in New Delhi 
and elsewhere also in the country, which is not giving due merit to Narendra Modi's victory, but arguing more about the quality of his victory. No, Hartos. precisely the point. You have to understand why this argument exists in the first place. Now, there is this myth that I think you have also been propagating that his votes among the Muslims have increased. There is no evidence for that so far at all. In Muslim constituencies with Muslim numbers, high Muslim numbers, his numbers have gone up. That does not mean the same thing as Muslim numbers increasing. His politics have gone... You go to his constituency of Mani Nagar, as I have, he's got 77% of the votes. There's yeah. only one pocket of Muslims there in Millat Nagar. He has never been there. They have not voted D so for him. So does Modi, Modi's victory present a dark side of democracy? Of course it does. It does. It does. He proceeds okay. by ignoring large sections of the population deliberately. The signal is clear. That is the danger of majoritarianism, that you can ignore certain sections of Nirja, the population and move ahead. Nirja, do you agree with that assessment? Can I? Look, I have, a, a, I, I, like I said in the morning, I feel he will need to win the confidence of the minority. Understood. Muslim point number one. Yeah. If he has to be Prime Minister of India, and that goes beyond winning a majority. That's True. point number one. But, Arnav, I also have a problem of, uh, uh, about raising this issue of dark side. Yes. This dark side of democracy is something that has to be settled through the democratic process. Yes. It cannot be, you know, I have a problem raising it an hour after the victory. Yes. It's like Sushma Swaraj threatening to torture her head the, the, in 2004 uh, that Sonia Gandhi uh, not may, be made may, the I want, Prime I want to ask Sanjay Nirupam before, I, before maybe we can take that question to Sanjay Nirupam on whether he, Manisha just coming to you. Uh, before I come to you, Navika, let me ask, let me ask that question to Sanjay Nirupam. Sanjay Nirupam, this debate has now broken out. Yogendra Yadav says the victory represents a dark side of democracy. It poses a challenge to democracy. Smriti Irani strongly disagrees. Swaminathan Iyer fairly strongly disagrees with that. Where do you stand on it? Because if you've congratulated the BJP on their victory, surely you don't believe that the victory itself presents a dark side of our democracy. But where do you stand, Sanjay Nirupam? See, I don't want to go back to 2002 uh, incident because it is for the BJP to try to get rid of it. As a matter of fact, BJP or Narendra Modi is not able to do anything as far as that massacre is concerned. He played a gimmick of Sadhbhavana and in that Sadhbhavana meeting, he, he didn't wear a, a cap offered by a Muslim guy. So somehow, somehow he still believes in that communal card and that, that card he didn't play in this election. Let That's him complete, I'll come to you. Yeah. But overall, huh? excuse me. No, no, I said, I, Smriti has raised her hand. I'm just telling Smriti, the moment it can, uh, Mr. Sanjay Nirupam what? concludes, I'll let you Arnab, respond. Arnab, 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 one minute. Yes. Arnab, 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 one minute. Arnab, one minute. Arnab. What, I, what I understand that Mr. Narendra Modi is a basically big challenge to the democracy, not only because of the 2002 incident, but he himself is an arrogant guy. Today's, in today's victory speech, arrogant. it was full of arrogance, and I, me and myself, if BJP wants to project this kind of leader for the national level election, the issue, first that issue, will be a great the disaster issue, for the, the BJP. Issue, no, no, Shmi, now one second, Sanjay Nirupam, Sanjay Nirupam, are we discussing Narendra Modi is a successful politician or are you saying Narendra Modi is not a good human being? Uh, is that going to be the argument? Who defines who is a good human being, who is arrogant, who is not arrogant? Are parts of the Congress leadership not arrogant? Would that my, then be said? That my you know, opinion is... I, my, my, Arnab, Arnab, very humbly I want to submit, my opinion is, to become a good political leader, one, one is needed to be a good human being. And that human being character is needed missing in Narendra Modi. Being. So, I, the Congress party is saying Narendra Modi is not a good human being. This debate is getting very interesting. I put a question here for the audience. Can Modi replicate the Gujarat success on a pan-Indian national stage? That's the question. Navika Kumar, why don't you take this discussion well, forward? Yes. Well, the basic question that we are debating uh, at this moment is Narendra Modi, the personality. Two points uh, on this, you know, Aarti contended the success, only the survival of the fittest. Well, you can continue uh, to argue whether it's work in progress as far as the development agenda is concerned or has, uh, you know, Congress ruled this country for 50 years, so have we achieved everything? You know, that's, that's one comparison between the two sides. The other question, and the, my question would go to Yogen Riyadav. Uh, clearly, the language may not have been what you said, but if you heard his victory speech today, 
ही डिड से जहां भी हमसे कोई गलतियां हो गई हों मैं आप सबसे क्षमा मांगता हूं वॉज इन दैट नरेंद्र मोदी मेकिंग पीस विद द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ गुजरात और डज इट हैव टू बी इन द लैंग्वेज दैट इज डिट्रैक्टर्स लाइक यू वॉन्ट हिम टू यूज क्वेश्चन नंबर वन द सेकेंड इज द एंटायर कैंपेन ही यूज गुजराती टू वो द वोटर्स बट टूडे हिज स्पीच वॉज इन वाइज ही वॉज अड्रेसिंग द ऑडियंस on a national level why is, why is, he was sending the message that he's making his peace he only didn't mention 2002 and the word riots but he said agar in 11 saalon mein humse kahi koi galti ho gayi ho no, to i don't think he was making any reference to the riots that was my question to you two quick things uh, 